Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor. And it can never be used to hurt you. Why'd you read so much? Well, my brother has his sword, and I have my mind. And a mind needs books like a sword needs a whetstone. Peter Dinklage is born in June 1969 in the beautiful state of New Jersey in a Catholic household. From his mother's side, he is of German and Irish descent and in a family of four with his brother, he is the only one with achondroplasia, a genetic disorder that affects bone growth. Growing up, Peter loved his brother so much and he always thought of his brother Jonathan to be the real performer in the family. And if it wasn't for his passion for violin, he would have become a great actor. He attended a Catholic preparatory school for boys called Del Barton School. And in there, Peter had his first theatrical success in a fifth grade production of The Velveten Rabbit, which was a huge success for him at the time. From there, he started to see that he has actually some talent in acting so he started to experience a little bit more on his craft and one particular play helped him a lot which was called the true west by american playwright sam shepherd later on he attended the bennington college and graduates in 1991 with a drama degree dinklage's face was injured in the early 90s when he was in a punk funk rap band called Wheezy. It gave him a scar that runs from his neck to his eyebrows. He was playing at the nightclub CBGB in New York City where he was accidentally kneed in the face and started to bleed on the stage. He then decides to move on to New York to live out his best dream, become a true artist and build a theater company. But everything did not go as smooth as he wanted it to be and couldn't keep up with New York's aura overshadowing every actor and performer in the making. Hey, how's it going? Good Chino here. Just making you like and subscribe, comment down below. I will greatly appreciate it, Maji. I hope you're excited for the story. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, boy. Peter Dinklage back in the day in New York was very poor. And the only thing he had was a little cat called Brian. He didn't have no money, no car, no apartment, no bank account, like literally no nothing except debts. But through little jobs here and there, cleaning on pianos for like five months and sleeping on his friends' couches for a period of time and using couch surfing, he was actually able to land after a few years a little job the professional examination services as a data processor and for six years that was his job he at the same time hated it and loved it because he hated it because he wasn't doing his acting that he wanted to do and at the same time it was giving him enough money to have an apartment and a few things. Peter Dinklage's ideal role is in the romantic lead who gets the girl. He started with a perfect love and a low budget black film comedy drama called Living in Oblivion in 1995 alongside Steve Buscemi and from that experience he knew he didn't want it to pursue more roles only due to his condition and the next year he appeared as a building manager in the crime drama bullet which starred the rapper tupac hey basil tough where the hell do you think you're going get your ass back up that ladder and finish the job hey i'm done listen go follow the yellow brick road screw you fucker fuck you wise and even with his recent efforts he still didn't have an agent but after some recommendations especially from his friend Buscemi he was able to actually land a movie called 13 moons in 2002. Then in 2003 he plays Finbar McRide in The Station Agent by Tom McCarthy and with that he had a huge success. He earned more than eight million dollars in the box office versus a small budget and this got him a new fame where he earned an independent spirit award a screen actors guild award for best actor nominations still in the same year he starred in several off-broadway productions such as richard the third and the christmas comedy film elf with will ferrell i get more action in a week than you've had your entire life 
I've got houses in L.A., Paris, and Vail. Oh. Each one of them with a 70-inch plasma screen. So I suggest you wipe that stupid smile off your face before I come over there and smack it off. You feeling strong, my friend? Call me Elf one more time. And he appears in Tiptoes with Matthew McConaughey and Gary Oldman. And according to Dinklage, the original cut to Tiptoes was gorgeous. But after firing the director, the film was recut into a rom-com with dwarves. In 2005, he stars in Threshold, The Baxter, and he made an appearance in the adventure comedy drama Lassie as a traveling circus performer. Later on, he goes on to be in Find Me Guilty with Vin Diesel in 2006, where he plays the lead defense attorney. And all of the reviews says that he is concise and very professional. And still in the same year, he appears in Nip Tuck, then in an episode of the HBO series and Entourage, which I love very much. Followed by a role in the NBC's 30 Rock and the British romantic comedy called Penelope. Then the underdog, and at the same time, something wonderful happens in the life of Peter Dunklage. He actually gets married to Erica Schmidt in 2007, and they both have two beautiful children. All that led him to a famous role in Death at a Funeral in 2007 and a remake of this one in 2010. With Martin Lawrence, Chris Rock, Tracy Morgan, Zoe Saldana, Danny Glover, and many more. And as long as Peter keeps it real to himself, he was actually making great work, performing for various types of shows, such as a role in Uncle Vania and I Love You Too. But then he appears in the Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, and the film was a box office disappointment. And Peter's role was said to be the cutesy stereotype he has tried to avoid. And Peter Dinklage accesses his biggest role ever. He portrays Tyrion Lannister in HBO's fantasy drama Game of Thrones in between 2011 and 2019. Tyrion is a member of House Lannister, one of the wealthiest and most powerful families in Westeros, and uses his status to strategize and leads the impact of the marginalization and derision he had received all of his life. This damn show has made my life as so great and ruined me in so many ways. You're a clever man. But you're not half as clever as you think you are. Mm. Still makes me more clever than you. When I first heard they were interested in me for a fantasy show, I went, Ugh, no. Especially being my size, and I'm not really interested in portraying a fantasy of a person. I'm an actor. I like to portray real people. And sometimes in the world of fantasy, that gets lost. He was the first actor to be casted. And during the meeting with the producers, Dinklage was absolutely delighted with everything they were saying. Because about the character, they were saying that he would be popular. He would have no beard, no pointy shoes, and he would be a romantic, real human being. And before the meeting was over, Dinklage already signed the papers. <laughs> and from all of his excellent performances in the show, he gets a widespread of critics from various sources such as the um, Los Angeles Times saying, and I quote, in many ways, Game of Thrones belongs to Dinklage. And for all of his performances, he went on to win an Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a drama series in 2011, 2015, 2018, and 2019. And in 2014, Dinklage and four of his Game of Thrones co-stars became the highest paid actors in television, with many millions to spend over the last seasons. Sometimes in the world of fantasy, that gets lost. This was the opposite because of the relationships between these characters, because of who Tyrion is, how flesh and blood he is. It's the most realistic show that I've ever done that also happens to have dragons and dead people walking around. And in 2015, he lends his voice to Tyrion Lannister in the game of Game of Thrones, a tailgate game series. And during those Game of Thrones years, Dinklage wins the award for best supporting actor, series, miniseries, or television film in 2012. Uh, I 
was talking to my mother uh, in Jersey before I came out, and, I, and she said, uh, have fun, but have you seen Mildred Pierce? Guy Pierce is so good, he's going to win. And he told the audience that he had been thinking about a gentleman, his name is Martin Henderson, and suggested that they Google his name. Henderson was a man with dwarfism from Somerset, England, who was badly injured after being tossed by a rugby fan in a bar. The speech by Dinklage brought media and public attention to the act of dwarf tossing, with Henderson's name being trended worldwide on social media. Henderson eventually died of his injuries in 2016, five years after the incident. He also voices Captain Gut in Ice Age Continental Drift in 2012, and he appears in an episode of the Saturday Night Live in 2013, and he also hosted a whole episode in 2016. Then he went on to be in the Knights of Battistum, the X-Men Days of Future Past, Pixels, The Angry Birds Movie, Rememory, Three Billboards, Outside Ebon Misery, Three Christs, Avengers Infinity War as a Giant Dwarf, then a film based on actor Hervey Vilchase called My Dinner with Hervey, then Cyrano, I Care A Lot, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, She Came To Me, and The Hunger Games. Peter and his longtime friend and manager David Gensbor joined power to actually create a production company called Estuary Films and they made I Think We're Alone Now. He then buys the rights to the movie The Thicker and later on his production company signs a first look deal with the Entertainment One and in 2022 Dinklage appeared on an episode of the WTF with Mark Mauron podcast in which he criticized Disney's portrayal of the Seven Dwarfs in the upcoming live action remake of the 1937 animated film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. He stated that Disney tried to be progressive in one way by casting a Latina actress as Snow White, but retained the damaging stereotype of the Seven Dwarfs. In response, Disney issued a statement saying, and I quote, we are taking a different approach with these seven characters and have been consulting with members of the dwarfism community. We look forward to sharing more as the film heads into production after a lengthy development period. End of quote. In conclusion, I would say that Peter Dinklage is a great human being, with full of talents just waiting to be created into reality. From an actor to an advocate for human rights and animal rights, and also advocated for PETA, where he even asks the fans of Game of Thrones to not actually buy new puppies, but to go and get some dogs out of shelters. He also attended the Women's March demonstration in 2017 in Utah to advocate for legislations and, and policies regarding human rights and many more issues. He is four feet and five inches tall, but with a sense of humor as big as a mountain and while growing up he found himself a bit angry and bitter about his condition but throughout the years he made peace with himself and with the whole world. Dinklage has won more than 12 awards from 58 nominations. He has been nominated for 8 Primetime Emmy Awards and 15 Screen Actor Guild Awards, winning 4 Primetime Emmy Awards, 2 Screen Actors Guild Award and a Golden Globe Award. When I was 29, I told myself the next acting job I get, no matter what it pays, I will from now on, for better or worse, be a working actor. So I quit my position at the professional examination services, and now I didn't have either the internet or a cell phone or a job. But something good happened. I got a low-paying theater job in a play called Imperfect Love, which led to a film called 13 Moons with the same writer, which led to other roles, which led to other roles. And I've worked as an actor ever since. I didn't know that would happen. At 29, walking away from data processing, I was terrified. 10 years in a place without heat, six years at a job I felt stuck in. Maybe I was afraid of change. Are you? My parents didn't have much money, but they struggled to send me to the best schools. 
And one of the most important things they did for me is that once I graduated, I was on my own. Financially, it was my turn. But this made me very hungry, literally. I couldn't be lazy. Now I'm totally lazy, but back then, I couldn't be. And so at 29, in a very long last, I was in the company of the actors and writers and directors I'd sought out that first year, that first day after school. I was, I am, by their sides. Raise the rest of your life to meet you. Don't search for defining moments because they will never come. The moments that define you have already happened, and they will already happen again. This was the story of Peter Dinklage. Thank you for staying until the end of this documentary video, guys. I hope you liked the content of the video, where we talked a lot about Mr. Peter right here. And throughout all of his story, discovering that if you actually follow your dreams with a passion, it might lead you to somewhere. And you can see that everything will work out at the end. If you're still watching, comment thrones down below in the comments section. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you know exactly when my next video is up, guys. That was it for me, and I'll see you next time for another banging video. See ya!